this is actually a funny story. So when I met Pharrell, right, I uh, Pharrell flew me down to his studio. Mm -hmm. So Pharrell was actually best friends with my dad in high school. Stop it. Yes. My dad's name is... And um, I went to the... When I was at the studio with Pharrell and I was talking to Pharrell, I was like, do you know... Because that's his name. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. He was like... He was like... And I was like, yeah, that's my dad. And he was like... I was like... That's my dad. And he pulled up a picture of him on Facebook. Yo, so, and that was the first time you saw him? And that was the first time I saw my dad. Whoa. And he pulled up a picture of him on Facebook and was like, it was like, well, I've seen pictures before of my dad when I was a kid, but it was my first time seeing him like years later. And like, he pulled a picture of him up on Facebook and was like, this is him. And I was like, yes. And Bugging he was like, out. Exactly. He was like, what the fuck? Killer Keller oh, 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 podcast. Killer Keller official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com. Box created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be. God damn it, big shout out to all the originals, all the people that are inside the place. Hold tight, strainstation.co.uk. Big shout out to nopolandrecords.com and all affiliates, friends, and everyone else who helps support. Sharing is caring, you know what it is, street culture. Kellervision is the app, free download, iPhone, Android for all your street culture, sports, and more. No games, get it free, simple and plain, inside the house today. It's a very special report. With a very special rapport from a young lady sitting to the left of me, you're right. Believe me when I tell you this is a breath of fresh air. She's come into my room. Believe me, the room needs it. Pod Trap is definitely smoking up in here at the moment with a more recent podcast, but we're going international. Got a lady that's coming for the first time in the UK, holding it down with the vocal dexterity that every, every woman should have in the music industry, a few and far between, because this lady right here is the one up and coming, Pusha T's favorite, the awesome Shaolin inside the place. Hi, <laughs> hi. Thank you for having me. <laughs> first time in London. Mm -hmm. How's it feel? First time. Ooh, um, it's a uh, pure first impression wise. People are a lot ruder than I thought. Ooh, what have you done to her? I know, what have you done to her, I people? Know. But it was just mostly in the airports. But outside of that, like people are really cool. What's the deal with that? Do you think it's some sort of like you know Zen? They don't give a fuck. They just knock you out of the way. Yeah, I think it's. I just think it's because they're like you know every everybody comes to London, so it's like. Eh. It's, you know? it's, it's a it's a it's a place of uh, yeah. of root. Yeah, it's like people people are tired of seeing people. You can just tell. It's it's like that in some cities in America too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, what's the one? Denver. There's a big crossover in Denver, right? Yeah, something like that. DC, New DC, York, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. You can already tell when you can tell when they're pissed off because they got those blow up. Um, uh, pillows on their neck and they really don't want to blow them <laughs> down. They're just so done in. <laughs> you know, run inside the place. Hold tight, brother. Are you good? Yeah, there we go. All crews inside the place. Um, let's get into it because mm -hmm. uh, this is your first time in the UK. What, yes. what are you doing here? Um, so I have like three shows uh, and I have a podcast that I was invited <laughs> to <laughs> and um, a interview on BBC Radio that I'm excited for. Hell yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's about it. Hanging out, meeting uh, supporters and musicians that have been waiting for me to come down here. They, they, you really have supporters, man. I'm not even yeah. joking. Yeah, like, like, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> Big shout out to Tommy Evans that connected us because without yeah. question, like he, he opened his Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. Like, girl, your vocals are fucking awesome. Thank you. What's it like? How did this come to fruition? Where the point was like, because it's, it's one thing having a great voice, there's another mm. thing like getting it to the point where you're sitting here in London. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. was there a path that you kind of took on and chose? It was, it's funny because it's not really 
there wasn't really a path that I chose. It was just like, I just went with everything and it kind of just happened. And I believed in people and po people believed in me. Mm. And I ended up being here and I'm going to end up being farther, you know? Mm. And it's just the people that I believe in mm. and that have helped me. So it's, it's really surreal, isn't it? When you do something, and I'm, only sp I'm speaking as much for personal experience, mm -hmm. because um, there is a level of synergy that comes into play where the thing that you do that is just a regular as turning on a tap mm -hmm. suddenly captures the imagination of an audience that you don't even know. Yeah. And then before you know it, you, you, the stabilizers are off your bike and you're, you're flying with E.T. in the basket. Yeah. It's, it's, it must be really surreal to experience that. It is. It's It's honestly, in a way, it kind of happened really fast. And it was like, I didn't really see myself being out of the country, let alone doing shows out of the country so soon, especially when COVID hit. Like, you know, even though I was like two years ago, but mm. still, it just felt like everything just was, it was off mm. after, you know, like I felt like there were a lot of things off. How like, did that make you feel? How did that work with your kind of plans your trajectory it definitely messed up a lot of plans that i had i that i shows that i was supposed to do things that i was supposed to do outside of the state um around the time a lot of things got canceled a lot of uh music that i was going to put out we held off on and it was just like it really stopped a lot of things mm -hmm. and so i thought that after like during COVID and a little bit after, I would have like a lot more catching up to do, I guess. Mm. But it still all just happened so fast. The complete opposite. Yeah. By the looks of things. Yeah. Like yeah, the complete I mean, opposite. If anything, COVID, COVID literally helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've had a lot up. of artists say that. A lot of artists are like, "Well, we don't know what we were doing up until which point, and then all of a sudden the land was flat." Yeah. It was almost like the great reset of music. Yeah. It was just like everybody's inside. So now everybody has time to really think about what they want to do. It's beautiful, isn't and it? And what they want to make. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To get this opportunity where you're able to create. Yeah. Without any... Uh, well, the realities are you're not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you have the opportunity to create without asking for permission to. Mm. It's like you have... It, everybody had time. Yeah. You know? And yeah. everybody had time to do something. Something. I bet there was some record. You know, because like, there's this old fable with with people that put up music. Is like their first album is always the best, and then the second one is almost like that. Oh, and the third one is like they're getting back on their feet, and then the fourth one they're back in the room. Yeah. I think that's because they've spent a lot of time by themselves doing mm. their own thing without too much going on for mm. the first album. Yeah. Than concentrate. There must be a whole batch of new music even now because America suffered oh, differently, yeah. didn't they? You know. Oh, for sure. Yeah, America suff suffered a lot like especially uh the cities and stuff like mm. a lot of people could not even like go out into their car and drive like yeah. on the street yeah. like there were curfews at like eight it was really bad and but um yeah it definitely it's funny that you say that because during covid i actually improved a lot more on my music and my writing because i was trapped with one of my favorite producers um, his name is Berg, but um, he yeah, Berg, old tight. Berg, <laughs> but um, hey, Berg. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was like, tr literally, we literally trapped ourselves in his studio for the whole year oh, and just God. did nothing but made That's make music. So good. And it's like when you do that, what's when you do that with first off someone that you believe in and you love and vice versa, it's like. It's just it's so easy mm. to just sit down and make a song. Mm. And it's like when you have that with someone or with certain people, it's like anything is possible. And I feel like when that had happened, I knew that for me, anything was possible. Mm. So that's why I feel like everything happened so fast. What's that feeling when you create a riff or a great top liner or a chord? Mm. What's, your, what's, that, what's that endorphin feel like? It feels like in my mind when I know that I created something that like I'm like, oh, people are gonna be singing this. This is gonna be the part where people get chills. <laughs> it's like in my mind, it's like I am sitting back as a listener 
listening to it for the first time. And when I listen to it back, I know that I it's going to be so amazing because I can't stop replaying it. And it's like when I constantly get that same feeling every time I replay it over and over and over again mm -hmm. and get that same specific feeling on a certain spot of yeah. the song, it's like... That's how I know, like, that's it right there. Oh, God, that's good. Yeah. I love it you say that. And I love you explain it like that because it is a, it's a thing. I often think to myself, you know, like, people like, I don't know, Jill Scott, for instance, mm. just sort of throw it out there. Like, Jill Scott, she never, she never witnessed the birth of her first album because she was the one that wrote it. I often wonder what is their equivocal in their record collection that does that same thing because we're so... You know, we're in love with the thing that an artist makes, but they don't always experience that love themselves. Oh, for sure. There are definitely uh, moments, like, songs that are out. Uh, for example, like, my song, one of my songs that are out is uh, Heavy Heart. That song, I honestly didn't even want to put on the album or the EP because mm. I was like, nobody's going to like this. I was like, nobody's going to want me to open up this much like they want something catchy and then I convinced myself that because because I told myself and convinced myself of that I started to hate the song Damn. and and because of it I was like I don't even want this out and then I remember my manager he was like we're putting this on the EP and that's the most played song the most loved song on the EP was the one that I shit on and hate yeah. And it was Pusha T's favorite song on the EP. And you shit on it? And I shit on it. I was like, nobody's going to like this. I don't like this. And it was like... How would you feel about it now? now? Now I've seen how much of an impact it has, especially on younger females, mm. because they relate a lot to it with their relationships with their mom mm. and being insecure in high school. Mm. And it was like, once I saw how much that impacted them, I realized why people God, love this cool. song. Yeah. You got songs like that? Yeah. You got songs like that. <laughs> is that how you're going on? What's your uh, what's your turnaround time if you were to jump into a studio like right now? Mm -hmm. What's your engagement time from being busy having a bad one because the label's doing X, Y, Z or there's a marketing problem or, mm -hmm. you know, y y your home life is a re and then you get in a studio. What's the what's the time frame in which you go from stress to creative? The moment, ooh, that time frame is literally the moment I go see my engineer. Mm. The moment I walk in and I see... Uh, I, I work with the same engineer. His name is Tim. You or Tim? Terrific. Oh, like Tim. We see you. Yeah. Tim and, Terrific. Yeah, Terrific. Oh, yeah, I love him. He's amazing. But every time I see him, he brings, he, well, one, he's such a great engineer. And when you have a, when you, you know when someone is a genuinely good person. Yeah. And he's the engineer that when he likes you as an artist, he will always show love. So it's like every time I walk into the studio and I see him and he just shows nothing but love to me, yeah. it's like whatever mood I was in or however I was feeling that day, it just switches. Mm. And I'm just like, you know what? Let's get this shit going. Like, let's get this recorded now. Like, I'm I'm in it now. At what point did you think we were playing uh, here on the <laughs> podcast? You know, we got pedigree in here. I love the fact that you've got pedigree within your camp and they make you excel. Mm-hmm. It's few and far between, especially when you're in the, the f especially when you're in the midst of the, 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 the eye of the, actually the eye of the storm's a good thing. Mm. You're at the beginning of the eye of the storm. Mm. You're about, to, you're, you're at the precipice of it all. Mm. Um, because the likes of Tim, he, he helps guide you mm. and almost coach. Yeah. Right? He does. Yeah. Especially like in, in some certain songs when you, you know, I always believe that, uh, when you have a group of people and they all have different minds, mm. you all can make beautiful things because there's so many different ideas because mm. everybody thinks differently. Mm. And it's like when you have an idea for a song and then you have an engineer that's like, hey, you should do this. Hey, you should add this. Hey, you should try this. And in your mind, you wouldn't have thought of that. Mm. But when you do it, it's like, oh, that's fire. Like you just, you just amplified my mm -hmm. sound, my idea that I started and you ran with it and made it yeah. farther, you know, yeah. and made it more than it was before. And 
I feel like that's what like my engineer does. I feel like that's what I want any engineer to do or producer, anybody that I'm making um, that is making beats with me or for me, I want them to bring out the best in me. Mm. I do not want them to bring out mid or the worst. Mm -hmm. Like I want someone to push me and I want to work with people that help me put out my sound in a way that no one's ever heard before. <sighs> that's cold. Yeah, that's yeah. cold. How, how, far, how far can Shaolin be pushed? Oh my gosh! How far can I be before pushed? before before the Whitney comes up? Before you're just like, ah! Yeah. Uh, okay. I feel like I feel like I can be pushed to the point to where um, I am fine that uh, it's overwhelming, it's overbearing, mm. but not fine to the point to where I am not giving myself rest. Mm. I feel like I can always go past the limit, you know? I can always go past the limit. Mm. But sometimes you really do need to sit down and tell yourself, okay, like breathe, relax, and just think mm. for a second. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you're just, okay, okay, getting up, doing this, getting up, doing that, you're not, it's like you, every, every thought is just going by. Because mm. what you're thinking about is getting it done. Mm -hmm. But you're not thinking about how should I make it? Yeah, the, the, those moments, and it is a level of um, it's a stoic mentality of living in the present mm. and letting those uh, juices, those inspirations, the gods, come down. Mm. Um, but without getting too caught up on that either. Yeah, because I feel like it's if you get too caught up in it, you start to question yourself, and then once you start questioning yourself, then you'll start not believing in yourself right. and you'll start then the doubts will come in and then the insecurities and then you're like this isn't good enough this isn't good enough and now you're forcing things because you believe that it it wasn't as good as you thought it was mm. but in reality it was mm. and you should have left it alone and just started something new mm. from scratch instead of trying to force this one thing to work when it's not working yeah you know? Yeah, definitely. Sometimes you get to that point with a song where you just want to, I believe it can work. It's got to, mm -hmm. and you're just like resuscitating a dead duck. Mm -hmm. It's just not, you know, it's flat. Yeah, like just leave it alone. It's either dead and gone, mm. and there's nothing you can do about it, and mm. you just move on and make something new, mm. or you rest, you let it go for a second, and then come back to it later. Mm. And there, I feel like a lot of my music that I was making when I was doing that is my worst music. Of course. Because, it has to be. That's a yeah. lot of average, right? Yeah. It's because it's like I try to bring back a dead duck, like you said. <laughs> like, and when Nothing I should just... Nothing's a ducks. Yeah. If it don't work, baby, it don't work. It don't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Batting average then, right? So batting average. If you were to make eight... No, if you were to make 10 songs, which ones do, on average, would you think, yeah, those are bangers? If I were to make ten songs, um, what's the what's the average you reckon of a banger? Four. Four. <laughs> Talk that shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think four out of ten. That's that's a heavy that's a heavy swing. And I make I make some pretty good music, so I would definitely say four out of ten are bangers, and six are like this is cool, mm. but these are the ones that hit. Right. So mm. which ones are those? Out of, right, other four they go into the stockpile, cool mm. the bangers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how many? Bangers do you need? Because, you know, we're breaking these down incrementally. How many bangers do you need before you start even picking? So, mm, that's funny. So, actually, I make sure that, uh, especially the music that I'm making now, I make sure that the things that I put into a collection are nothing but bangers. So, I will never try, I will never put anything that I feel is mid into a group mm -hmm. with bangers. I will always feel like this a banger, this a banger, this a banger, this a banger. They're all going together. And all the mid mm. is going to the side. Mm. And that's how I separate my music. When I make loads of music and I know the ones that are the bangers, those are the ones I'm putting out, mm -hmm. not the mid. And mm -hmm. people may come over and I'll show them the mid. And, you know, sometimes they'll probably be like, oh, this is, you know, this is fire. Like, you're sleeping on this. But in my mind, it's like, it's... 
It's not it. It's not it. It's not like this. That's a problem that I think people people get themselves into, mm. especially when they have trusted people in the room. I, I, I'm kind of a believer that you leave your friends outside the studio. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because it's like the last mm. thing you want to do is be like tainting mm. your own process just because they're just fans of you anyway. They're just like... Super yeah. Oh, every, this is fire. That's fire. That's fire. That's yeah. fire. Yeah. Everything's fire to them. No disrespect. But yeah. You know, no. And I 100% agree with that. Everything is fire to your friends. Yeah. They're not... They're never going to tell you no. Yeah, yeah. Because they're always going to see it as... This is my way of supporting them by always telling them yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And it's not. I need to know if this is mid. Mm -hmm. if, and if in my mind I'm like, no, I like this, I like this. And then someone's sitting here and telling me, well, Shao, there you could do so much more with this. And it's like the fact that you're like settling for just this. Mm -hmm. It's not good. Nah. And like when I get told that and then I let it breathe and I leave it mm -hmm. and then I come back to it, I'm like... They were right. Mm. Like this was mid, and I need to work on this. Mm. So, how much? How much do you love uh, what you do now compared to what you did before? Now, that sounds a very mm. emotional question. That is actually. That's but you a get where I'm coming from. No, no, that's a very great question. Um, I actually feel like I love what I'm doing now a lot more than what I did before because I feel like the music that I was making before, I was just trying to more so find myself mm -hmm. and find my mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. But it's like now that I know what I'm capable of, mm -hmm. now I know like all this new stuff that I made, all this new stuff that I'm making and all the new stuff that I'm going to make mm -hmm. is going to blow all of that old shit out of the mm -hmm. water. Does that plague you a little bit, the fact that you've, you've gone through this... Uh, metamorphosis, this this thing, and 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 that still kind of harks back to you. Might be trying a few riffs out, and you're mm -hmm. like, no, no, I can't. It sounds like that. Mm -hmm. Leave it. Yeah, no, they're definitely. It definitely plagues me sometimes. Because sometimes there are melodies that uh, I made years ago that I reuse again and not realize it, mm -hmm. and I'm like, nope, mm. like nope. Sometimes there are beats <laughs> that I gravitate towards that sound like old ones that mm. I mm. have out, and I'm like, nope need something new but yeah no with with the new stuff I it's just like I want to be pushed and I want to push myself and I do and it's like I feel like that metamorphosis that I went through happened so fast because mm -hmm. I feel like the moment I put out new music I'm like I can make better mm -hmm. I can always make better than this mm -hmm. and I feel like that pushes me to make better. Yeah. You know? Yeah, of course. Of and course. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. It's a process. Mm -hmm. And you have to have distance. You have to create with no uh, cable ties to anything else. Yeah. Um, where you, where's your home? Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach? Mm -hmm. I've never been to Virginia. What's it like? Talk to me. Ooh, it's, uh, you know, we, get, we got a hill made out of trash. Hey. Mount Trashmore. Yo, Mount Trashmore. <laughs> Yo, it sounds healthy. Mm -hmm. Sounds like sounds like one hell of a runyon. Mm -hmm. Um, we got the ocean front, the boardwalk, and the beach. That's pretty nice. Nice. Um, mm, yeah. That's mm -hmm. a Pharrell territory as well, right? Pharrell, yeah. He's a uh, yeah Pharrell territory. He's dope. I toured with him. I did some touring with him back yeah. in the day. He's um, dope. and so so Pusha T is also part of that fraternity he's, mm -hmm. he's you know clips was a seminal um uh project uh a la a push a t how did you how did you guys start par parlaying how did how did you guys uh connect it's actually funny because um, you're gonna get this question a lot over here that's the other thing i'll, I'll try and charm it and give it some other different vibes uh, it's fine I <laughs> i'm like the first it. one though so yeah yeah you are <laughs> um, but uh it's actually funny because um it was just kind of like my name was just going around locally mm. and people were talking about me and people were talking about me on his team and his team brought him up to me. And then I remember when we were in a meeting, he told me he was like, and what solidified it was my wife had came up to me and she showed me uh, your Instagram and was Sick. like, do you know this girl? Like, she's a local artist and she's dope. And he was like... Once, like, she came up to me and said that, like, I knew, like, okay, mm. I need to 
sit mm-hmm. down and meet this girl. Mm-hmm. But I just think that the love that I get from Virginia Beach, too, is, like, amazing. Mm-hmm. Because I get a lot of love there. Mm-hmm. And Virginia Beach is, like, it's just a really cool, cool place to mm-hmm. be. Like, it really is. The, the people there are just so so loving and giving and it's just everybody has their own different quirks and it's just so cool mm. yeah um that fast track of i mean you you are you know you're cited on drink champs more mm-hmm. recently um the fast track that that you attaining that allows you to have um and this is speaking as much personally as as, as a com- with a complete understanding mm-hmm. of the the journey um it it really does give you the opportunity to almost show and prove. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, whereas before, you were showing pr- proving at a lukewarm level of, yeah, I'm doing really great, and I'll keep going, I ain't going to stop. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you get over that lip and you've got people around you that are like, yo, this could really happen, mm-hmm. it gives you like a rocket, doesn't it? It really sends you somewhere. It's funny because... Um... I I try not I try to remain as humble as possible and try not to be cocky. It's but... which you do as well. You <laughs> do not do. You're very very humble. Thank you. Um, but I honestly believed in myself since I was in middle school, mm-hmm. and I walked around in middle school like I was a celebrity, and in high school, I felt that I was a celebrity. Like mm-hmm. I was like, in my mind, I was like, it's it's funny that. To me, people talk about celebrities like they're so unreachable and they're like, you can never, you can never, you know? But in Mm -hmm. my mind, I was, I always thought like, I I feel I'm at their Mm -hmm. level though. So how could I, so I'm a celebrity. Yeah. And I always believed in myself like that for so many years. So when these, so when opportunities, opportunities were popping up and recognition was coming my way, I wasn't surprised mm-hmm. because I believed in myself and I already felt like this from mm-hmm. the get-go. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, I don't know. It's just like, to me, it, it never was like, it, it, it's dope. It's I love it and I am grateful, but I never was like, oh my God, like this is crazy, this is insane. Like I can't believe this is happening because in my mind I was like, I knew mm. this would happen, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know? I yeah. believed. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, um, when you're when you're on your path, because I, I totally feel you, when you're on your path, mm-hmm. um, and it isn't a braggadocious, it's not egotistic, it's it to me, it's a given that somebody like yourself with pure talent would be sitting here. I may not have I may not have overassumed it on my first ever episode, mm-hmm. but I could see it. Yeah, and when you see it, and you, you all of a sudden it is, it, it, it's just it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's, it's the gods are just like you, you, you're in tune with the gods. You know what I mean? Mm. Is that what you're saying? It's like because I, like, again, I don't, I don't for a second tip you as being like anyone that is out of the norm, other than just completely at peace with who you are. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just, I don't know. It was just like, it was like. One once I knew, I just knew. Like it just never, it never was really hard to accept any other fate. You know, it was like, uh, or yeah, it wasn't hard to accept this fate. Mm-hmm. Like I knew, like, it just at certain moments, whether it was a song I wrote, mm-hmm. a song I freestyled, mm-hmm. like, uh, or just people coming up to me and like telling me like. I see something in you hmm. or like it, it just I just knew you know and it was like it's an aura isn't it it's an yeah aura, something it's yeah. like when you know you know mm. and there and it's just that's it like there's nothing else to be said and it's not in a sense of like I'm not putting myself above anyone I'm not doing any of that mm. I just knew at one point in my life when I was young that this is who I am. Do you feel guided? In a way, yes. Like, I feel like, yeah, in a way, yeah. I do feel like something is there, ha- yeah. like, happening. You religious? And you religious? I'm not, but I do 
believe in a higher power, mm. but I'm not a religious person. Yeah, I'm kind of mm-hmm. with that. I'm kind of with that. It would be yeah. foolish for us to think otherwise. Yeah. I definitely will just say the universe told me so. Mm. So, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, and, you know, the level of resistance that you put in your head for some things that either you don't want to do or you think is too far away from mm-hmm. you. Up against karma and the way that that has a way of dealing its hand, all of it is psychological. Mm-hmm. It is. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. You do something bad, it ain't the universe saying, well, you're a fuckhead, you're, you're not going to get what you want. No, it's you because you're rattling. The whole fucking time. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's a price you pay. And, and I think that similarly to resistance, which is the other side of the mental um, uh, seesaw, is that you're resisting something and you're blaming the rest of the world for not allowing yourself to get it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, and that's, and that's another thing too because I feel like when there are moments that I doubted myself and I told myself like, you're go you're over your head like what well, you know like mm. why would you put yourself at that level the moment i had those doubts and that conscience in my head mm. my music came out bad mm. my writing was bad like i wasn't creative i wasn't yeah. inspired i was depressed and then the moment i told myself like what am i talking about yeah. like yeah, 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 yeah. This Have is to talk you with are. yourself. Yeah, <laughs> like the moment I was like, what am I doing? Like, this is who I am. Yeah. It just comes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a story about tennis elbow, you know, like apparently tennis athletes, they, they get tennis elbow. Well, mm-hmm. Apparently, hey, comment below, you know what I mean? I'm no, I'm no physio, but um, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't have tennis elbow. It's, mm-hmm. all in the, it's all in the mind because they're finding things that um, could possibly um, stop them you know, it's their own paranoid feeling. You know, I go, what if? What if I get this? Oh my god, I got it! <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And shit like that. Yeah. I guess we all can, we can all fall foul to that at times, can't we? Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's like basically thinking it into existence. Mm. It's like it hasn't even happened yet, but you're gonna make it happen mm. by thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, and, it's, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's to, to, to the point mm-hmm. that it comes alive, and it and it becomes a reality. And then when it's there, it's like. Why? Why? Mm. Why is it happening? And it's like yeah, the monkey on your shoulders telling you in your ear. Then, yeah. You and know. it's like because you doubted yourself, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, life doesn't take fools kindly. No. Right. Um, change the subject, brothers and sisters. Yes, I am the only sister. I am the youngest, and I have two brothers. Ah. Yeah, the only girl. The only mm-hmm. girl. Ah. You win. I've got to say. Mm-hmm. Um, Mother and father still together? No, uh, actually, I've never really m- met my father. I don't remember him. Uh, yeah, my mom raised me and my three brothers uh, by herself her entire life. They actually, got mumsy. Whole yeah, time. Mom. Shouts out to my mom. Oh damn! Shouts Look out to you... all the single mothers. Hundred, hundred and ten percent. And shame on you, fathers that walk away. Yeah. Um, uh, did you always? Like, was there anything that was encouraged of you? Was it a free form, like, way of living that you had where, you know, creativity was um, nurtured and, and every... Or was, or was it more of a kind of, Jesus, she could sing, what happened there? It was... It's funny because I... It was actually nurtured because um, a lot of... My mom used to actually write and make a lot of music right. when I was younger. And my dad, from what I've heard uh, from a lot of people, he actually sang really good really like people would tell would tell me when they would talk to me about my dad that he had a beautiful voice <gasps> and it was like that's where I got my voice from and I was told that and you know it's actually funny go on this is actually a funny story so when I met Pharrell right I uh Pharrell flew me down to his studio mm-hmm. so Pharrell was actually best friends with my dad in high school stop it yes my dad's name is and um, I went to the, when I was at the studio with Pharrell and I was talking to Pharrell, I was like, do you know, because that's his name. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, he was like, he was like, and I was like, yeah, that's my dad. And he was like, I was like, that's my dad. And he pulled up a picture of him on Facebook. Yo, so, and that was the first time you saw him? And that was the first time I saw my dad. Whoa. And he pulled up a picture of him on Facebook and was like. It was like, well, I've seen pictures before of my dad when I was a kid, 
but it was my first time seeing him like years later. And like he pulled a picture of him up on Facebook and was like, this is him. And I was like, yes. And Bugging he was like, out. Exactly. He was like, what the fuck? Like, wow, this is crazy. He was like, Larry's daughter is in my studio right now. Yo, yo, like, yo, yo. Seriously, though? like That's crazy. Yeah, that is the most... Talk about serendipity. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, right? Okay, right. So, picture this, mm -hmm. okay? I want you to be as honest as you can. Mm -hmm. You are in a sellout, I don't know, garden. Yeah. You know, it'd be the garden. Yeah. It has to be. Mm -hmm. um, and you get a call from your dad. Oh, my gosh. Yo, mm -hmm. yo, what are you going to do? Okay, so. He's calling you and he's going, hey. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's me. And, uh, yo, I, I, I just want to reconcile. I, I haven't seen you for uh, ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love to come to your show and talk it up. What would you do? Okay. So. Bear in mind that Pharrell is, you know, there's there's a mm -hmm. there's a six degrees of separation yeah. with an average person with Pharrell, but like he knows your dad right mm -hmm. to call. Cool. Like that that was his buddy yeah. in high school, bro. Like that was his that was his best. You see how complicated this That's, could be. Yeah. Yo. So if that were to ever happen, okay. So the artist side of me would be like, what the fuck? Like, why are you calling me? Like you, you, you knew my number. Hey. Like you knew how to reach me, and you're just now doing it without like, question. Why? Like, fuck you. Yeah. The daughter side of me would be like, closure. Go see him and ask why. Ooh. And I feel like when you have that conscience in your mind, where it's like, fuck him, or, but you don't know. You don't know the story. You were a kid. Mm. You don't know. Like, that's your dad. Closure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. really hard. And I feel like, honestly, for me, the answer that I would have to decide would be how he would present himself to me. Mm. Like, if he called me and I could tell it was on some, like, you know, I got milk, I'm coming back, you got a bag, I can tell, like, I'm trying to be in your life. Mm. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. But if it's like on some, hey, I want to like see you and talk, mm -hmm. like sit down and talk about like everything, the daughter in me would be like, okay, mm -hmm. you know? It's very noble and a really hard question to ask. In yes. fact, um, um, I, I would argue that a lot of your writing, a lot of everything, elements of your life that maybe are unbeknownst to you or anybody else that goes through this sort of um, life without, with, minus a parent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people don't have that choice. Um, unfortunately, your father is alive. It's it's more of a kind of, like you say, your, the daughter side would be more, you know what? I've done good. Yeah. It's kind of okay. Yeah. I wouldn't be writing these songs if I had you. Mm -hmm. You don't know? I wouldn't. I wouldn't be where I was at if you were in my life. Yeah. If he was in my life. Yeah. I wouldn't. And and I and that's another thing that I tell people about is like when people are so upset sometimes at trauma and certain things, um, a lot of the trauma like that I dealt with in my life, I feel like I wouldn't be where I was at if I didn't go through anything. Yeah. And a lot of artists, a lot of creatives can relate to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like to me, it's like the daughter in me would be like, I forgive you, but I still need to know why. You know? It's like I need to hear from you. Mm. Not from my mom, not from someone else, not from another father who may understand. Like, mm. no, I need to hear from you why. Yeah. But I forgive you for not being here. But why weren't you here? It's kind of a level head, isn't it? It's all about the level head. Yeah. You know, I know, and I totally feel the respect for that, for real.
No problem. Thank you for that question. Yeah, that was man. I love yeah. that. You're on a podcast, man. It's your <laughs> podcast. There's no escape now. You're the dragon's lair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're over here for the Rich, Rich Mix, which yes. is located in East London. Uh, mm. Have you got your your uh, vocal cords warmed up for such an event? Huh? Oh yes, yeah. I had just had rehearsals with the band today. I'm How gonna was that? have it was great. Yeah. I mean, the the power went out in our room only, so we had to cut rehearsals short. But I know, but <laughs> we will be rehearsing again tomorrow. And from the three guys that uh and my best friend John, who's on the keyboard, mm. uh, but the three guys there, To Tojo, Tijo, mm. um, Harry, and Ollie. Are they from Britain? They're from yeah, London. They're London. from here. Old type boys. Yeah, they're, they're dope. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they're dope. Yeah. Um, you're in for a treat with East London, because mm. um, I'm not sure how much have you seen of it today. You only landed today, right? Yeah, I honestly didn't really see much of it because um, I was just so tired and jet lagged today that I couldn't really keep my eyes open yeah. the entire day. Well, there's a lot of music. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, street art. There's all sorts of uh, bits mm. and bobs that are going on, and also you're hitting the weekend, so it can only be good. Mm -hmm. um, what's popping out? What's popping out in the US at the moment? What tunes? What things? What 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 are you, what are you feeling at the moment? What's going on? Hmm, what's going on at the moment? Um, Tune wise, with dealing with me wise. No, or just that, in yeah, general. just in general, things that yeah. are flicking your switch. We um, going, yeah, like, Kanye, yeah, Kanye. I think that's a big thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a big thing. Yeah. For those of you watching this in like three years from now, Kanye was a bit of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really, really love Kanye, yeah. and you know, Push and Kanye, they're like tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, I love Kanye, and um, he's challenging. He's pushing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can't ask for any. Like more than artist, I think. Yeah, I just feel like, I feel like, this man just has so much on his mind. He just doesn't know how to deliver it all. Mm. You know, mm. I feel like he tries to say everything that's on his mind all at once, mm. and it's really hard for people to digest it because, like, I feel like he sometimes he just doesn't know how to deliver it. Yeah, that's right. But as a love, as as me growing up on his music and as a fan of mm. his and a supporter, I will always love Kanye. Like, yeah, I feel you. I feel mm -hmm. you. And let's let's remind ourselves, a lot of our um, childhood heroes, mine especially, yeah. it, you know, they they grow old and retire or pass away and then all this shit comes out about them and you're like, fuck off, leave it, man. This is, it's Michael Jackson, leave it alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> right? Yeah. But at least with Kanye, he's kind of, he's airing everything out. You, it, it does more than what it says on the tin. But it it certainly holds weight yeah. in conversation. And I, uh, yeah, it definitely does hold a lot of weight. But, you know, sometimes people really don't think about what they say until they say it. And sometimes you never know how people really feel or what they really meant till after. Because mm. sometimes people really do change their minds Sometimes people do regret it. Yeah. And sometimes people still do believe it. Yeah. But it's like when you don't, as a supporter and as a, people like us, we don't really know him on a personal level. Mm. I don't know what goes on with him behind the scenes. You know, he can tell us and show us whatever on Instagram, right. but, he, but we only know what he shows us. Can you imagine what goes on? Yeah. It's a lot. It could it, it could be so much and it's like we don't even know. Yeah. You know? Like all of this that he's showing is already a lot, but there could be so much more mm. that we don't even know. And it's like it's like I, I don't know. I just feel like I don't really know a lot about him or know him personally enough to be like Fuck him. Mm. Fuck him, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, he's a terrible person. Mm. I just don't, because mm. I just have a level of respect for him. Yeah, I always question the kind of people that throw comment onto people's feeds mm. and say things that I'm just like, oh, really? Like, you, you barely have lived the life. Mm -hmm. you, you can't even begin. To... There was that program with Kevin Hart and Wesley Snipes. Did you watch that documentary? No, did, did you, Chris? Did you, did you watch that? 
Right, so, so everything is going. It's this program about like you know, Kevin Hart murders a guy, just having some shit, and then they get some special agents to go and sort it out, and they were conning him and all that. Like, and then the you know the the front shop front of Kevin Hart was just like, I'm still the comedian, I'm still a comedian. But in the background, his brother played by Wesley Snipes is completely messing him about mm. and trickering him into all these different people, these moving parts that are basically trying to screw him over with money. Mm. It's all this kind of you know. You just don't know what's going on in people's lives. Yeah. You don't know how down the rabbit hole they've fallen. They don't even know. Yeah. Scary. And, and it's just like, to me, I can't just sit here and be like, I hate Kanye because of this and that and that. It's like, we don't, I don't know, you know? It's mm. like, I truly don't know. What happens if you get to this point, which is only inevitable? What, what do we, I mean, how are, how are you going to compartmentalize all of these... Uh, what would become total and utter mediocrity to you? Like, in a standpoint of, like, him or just, like, people, like, commenting on my life and stuff? A absolutely everything from the point of view of success breeding mm -hmm. conversation. Success breeding. More oh. money, more problems. Hypothetically. It's hard, like, it's hard, right? Yeah, I feel like... You know, a lot of people, if I'm answering your question right, I feel like a lot of people who are successful are scared to conversate because people don't want to say the wrong thing. That's a new thing, isn't and it? And people don't want to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. And it's like, it's so hard because people want you to be an idol mm -hmm. and people want someone to look up to but they only want someone to look up to that fits their needs, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like you can't look up to someone and expect them to be the person that you see in their mind. Oh. Like you can't. Yeah. Especially with their songs that resonate with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You can't. It's, impos it's an impossible task. It is. Because all you're doing is is basically... You're just loving someone for what you see is what you perceive yeah. as them. Yeah, but right. in reality, this is them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you either love them or you don't. That shit's dangerous. That's, that's the scenario that would get John Lennon shot. Mm -hmm. That's the scenario. Mm -hmm. that, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like for real. Like you, you, you can't. People, you can't expect your 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 starry eyes getting in the way of what the reality is for mm -hmm. a person. Because these people, you. People. We make music for people, yeah. but we don't expect them to resonate directly to someone's. It doesn't mm. work like that, does it? Yeah. It's like sometimes a song can resonate if 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 the song is detailed. It, it can be in a way the message can be direct, but does it mean that the person that I am is direct? Mm -hmm. So just because the song and the message that I gave to you is a specific message or a direct message mm -hmm. doesn't mean that that message is the person that I am mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or later in life. And a lot of people hold on to that. And they're doing that, like, for example, with Kanye. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were like, I want the old Kanye. Yeah. Like, Kanye's so crazy now. Like, what happened to him? We need him from before. And it's like, if you want the old Kanye from before then watch the old Kanye from before. Mm -hmm. Watch his old interviews. Listen to his old music. So true. It's like, but the Kanye now is the Kanye now. So mm -hmm. it's either you love him or you don't. And the likelihood is he was always kind of like that, but, you know, yeah. with pressure coming in. So James Corden, you know this guy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, he gets so much hate because he's apparently he's an asshole. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just his thing. He's... But I don't know how, so yeah, I, I don't know, know what he did. <laughs> I know, but he just, yeah. he seems to get himself in trouble with just being an, uh, you know, a, a, an evil villain in, 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 yeah. you know, in a movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, a lot of people say he's an asshole, and I'm like, I've never, I don't know how he is. Yeah, yeah. I would like to be informed on that, but... but maybe Maybe it's a similar situation. Mm -hmm. He has so many people. He don't want to be talking to people. Yeah. Want, yeah, want, yeah. And when you and when you're in a life where every traumatic event that you experienced was on camera. Can you imagine? Every every traumatic feeling you had was on camera, has mm. all been recorded, has all had an opinion. It's like you get to a point to where it's like, why do, do I even care anymore about anyone's opinion? Mm when my whole life has been on camera and all I've had my whole entire life is nothing but opinions. Mm. So why should I care about how well, anybody... Yeah, totally. yeah, 
why should I care about how I sound or talk to you when that's all y'all been doing my entire life? Mm. You know? And I feel yeah. like I feel like a lot of people well, going back to the conversation of people being scared to conversate, mm. I feel like that goes back to that. And I feel like Kanye's just he's not afraid to conversate. Yeah. And a lot of people are. And that's why, you know, he's where he's at now. Yeah. And I'm not going to say that I agree with everything he says. And I'm not going to say that I disagree with everything he says. But this man is going to say what he wants to say. And it's either you like it or not. Mm. Yeah, see, that's the freshest shit I've heard. Um, you seem extremely headstrong. It's early doors. You're just stepping into the creative arena in in, in industry level. <laughs> I've got a feeling like this conversation here is going to age pretty quickly so far <laughs> as your trajectory. But, but, but more interestingly, I think this is a great insight into you. And I feel like people look back on this as, as, as perhaps a seminal moment mm -hmm. where, you know, we'll see how honest things will become over yes. the years, right? And, it, and, it, and that is also funny, too, that you say that because, yes... A lot of what will happen in my future could possibly, I could possibly spiral and go downhill. Right. Or I could be an amazing person, whatever. Like, I, whatever my future right. is, people it's are going to bring this playful. up. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, this is how I feel right now. And so, it works. And it works. And I, and Viva. The mm. Shaolin ain't gonna change, will it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? It just seems to me like you've got a lot of things popping, and uh, London, UK is very much in open arms. So, Rich Mix this weekend, mm. uh, f Saturday, Saturday night? Sunday? Sunday? Yeah, Sunday, yeah, Sunday, no, Sunday Chris, yeah. Go, Chris got no cup. <laughs> Yo, uh, so we're gonna get this out mm -hmm. before then. Yes. I'm gonna do the job on it and make sure that people get down to this. Right. So, Rich Mix East London for, for your sin. Shoreditch, I think Shoreditch uh, is the nearest tube station. If you're coming from outside the uh, London quarters since it's own seven, well, get yourselves over to East. Hull Street Way, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for us. having me, Kilo. You're Total so awesome. Total superstar. Thank you. Total superstar. Um, and we're going to go painting, aren't we? Yes, we are. We are going to go, oh my God, I'm so excited. I've never done <laughs> it before. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, for our rake treat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're going to take you around. Well, we're gonna give you some cans and then mm, uh, and I'm just, you're fuck gonna see, shit up. You're gonna see my name and and some character somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's that's gonna right. be awesome. That's right. Well, this is Home Street Culture Killer Keller podcast. All right, music for the sport and art. Yes, big shout out, Charlene. Big shout <coughs> out to Charlene. And uh, of course, Chris, big up, Mighty Ronin. Hey, we are like, it was out of fashion, right? You stay lucky. Don't talk to anyone else. I wouldn't remember. Crime don't pay, but neither did I. All right. <laughs> you stay lucky, people. Cheers, Charlene. Bye. Peace. <laughs> that was so good. How was that? That was great. That's this is my favorite ever. Yeah, this was amazing.